Hi, I'm Pat Patterson, a developer evangelist at salesforce.com and this is just a short video to show how to use uh, Google's new OAuth2 Playground with um, force.com uh, REST API. So this is something that Google announced today. Um, it's on their uh, apps developer blog and on the Google code blog and I dare say if you uh, Google uh, OAuth2 Playground you'll probably find it. So um, what this is, it's uh, kind of like a little tool bench to allow you to connect to uh, OAuth, um, OAuth enabled APIs, primarily Google's, but it actually works with force.com and I'll show you right now how to do that. So if we click on OAuth2 Playground link, we, uh, we actually go to the playground. So as you can see, it's pretty much oriented towards uh, the Google APIs, there's analytics and books and everything. But what I can do is set my configuration here to be uh, custom endpoints. Now what we need to put in these two boxes here are the URLs that uh, Google's going to use to authorize an application. So what I can do is I can go to my article, uh, digging deeper into OAuth2 on force.com and actually lift those URLs from the text in here. So we scroll down a bit, scroll down, scroll down. We'll find here the authorize URL. So what I found is the easiest just to cut and paste that into authorization endpoint. And the token endpoint, we just change authorize to token. And if we read the text, um, we need to implement the OAuth2 draft 10 spec. Now, luckily, that's exactly what Salesforce uh, does. We, we implement that exact draft. And we need to list HTTPS code.google.com slash OAuth playground as a valid redirect URI. So what we need to do is we need to create a remote access app in our force.com org. So I'll go across here. I'll log in to my trusty... Uh, developer org. Just log in there. And once I've logged in, I just need to go to setup and develop. Scroll down a little bit and remote access. So this creates um, the application credentials that we can we can set in Google in the uh, OAuth playground. So we say a new remote access app. Let's call it uh, Google OAuth playground. So I'm going to paste in that the URL I just cut. So remember, I cut this URL here, code.google.com slash OAuth playground. And I'm pasting it into here. And the only other thing I need for now is my email address. So I just save that. So what that does, that creates a record at uh, force.com of my application and generates some credentials here. So I get this consumer key that I can copy and paste into this client ID. So consumer key and client ID are the same thing. So we just paste that in there and we need the client secret. So just grab that. And I'll have to remember to destroy this remote access uh, application after this video has been created so uh, you guys can't freeload on my credentials. So that looks good. We've got the two endpoints, we've got the client ID, we've got the client secret. So if we close that. Now Google want a scope. Uh, scope is optional. Um, and if you omit the scope, if you if you look in the article here, the Digging Deeper article, you can go down, you can see the discussion of scope here. It basically says, um, allows you to uh, get control of what the client application wants to access. So I'm just going to copy ID API refresh token, which is in fact uh, the scope you'd get if you uh, didn't bother passing it at all. If I paste that into there. Now before I try this out, I'm going to go to Salesforce here and uh, log out. That way we'll see the, the full effect. Okay, so I don't have a session uh, over there anymore. Now I can say authorize APIs 
And what should happen is that I'm taken to Salesforce. I have to log in. So I'm just going to use the same credentials as I used before. My uh, developer org, developer edition. And um, it's asking me to grant permission to Google OAuth Playground to access my information. So that's exactly what I want to do. So I'm going to say allow. And uh, we're in business. We've done step one of OAuth. Uh, it's a two-step process and we're in manual control we can really get an insight into what's going on so we've been redirected to Google um, we, we went to Google that redirected to us to Salesforce rather we authenticated we gave uh, authorization for the playground to access our data and we come back with this code and then step two is exchanging the authorization code for the tokens that we need to call the API and that succeeded and this is the response that we got that uh, it's really useful it has this ID URL as part of the response as well as an issued at timestamp a refresh token so this is a persistent token that we can use to get uh, access tokens that we need an instance URL tells you the endpoint where uh, the, the APIs are for this org signature there and then the access token that's that's you know the the main thing that we're looking for here so that that would be how I could call APIs what I'm actually going to do this is a really nice feature here I'm going to copy that uh, that ID URL and I can use the playground here I can paste it in there and I'm going to add a, a header I'm going to add X hyphen pretty print set that to one and close and if I send a request what I'm actually doing is I'm doing a get on that ID URL um, passing the OAuth token that I just got this is you know what the uh, playground does for me and this shows me all the information about my user the currently logged in user that is available to uh, an app so I get the name and the email address and so on and what's really nice here I can pull out the AP, the URL it gives me to access the REST API so I can just paste that in there change the version kind of shows up as a variable there to version 23 the current version of the rest well of all the APIs and I can just tack on the end there say query uh, question mark Q equals so whoops select name from account so the um, if we we're doing this programmatically we would URL encode the uh, the query string. I happen to know that the plus is the encoding for a space, so I can just send that request. And again, because we've got that nice pretty print header, this all comes out beautifully here. And we get we've done a query on all of the accounts in the system, getting their names. And if I just scroll down, where's one of these familiar ones? Burlington Textiles. We actually get a URL for each account. So this is the real power of the REST API here that it's very easy for applications having done a query to navigate around and get detail on that application so I just selected that URL pasted it at the end of uh, the request URI over here and there's all the information that the system has for Burlington textiles so um, I hope that was uh, instructive and um, you're inspired to go have a play with Google OAuth Playground